Hey everyone, welcome to Grove Church Online. My name is Cassie. Here are a few things to remember before we get started. If this is your first or second time watching, we want to invite you to have the best church at home experience with us today. So go ahead and text the word GROWTH to 97000 and complete the communication card you received on your device. Take a few minutes to complete it right now. Simply write in your name, address, email, phone number, or as much as you feel comfortable sharing. And be sure to check one of the boxes that say first or second time. First or second timers will also receive a free book and gift in the mail. It's our way of saying thank you and letting you know how excited we are that you joined us. There are a number of next steps noted on the communication card. If you've been part of the Grove Church for a while and would like to set roots and serve on a team, we'd love for you to attend Growth Track. This is your next step if you want to become part of the church. Growth Track is a great place to find out who we are and where you fit in. It's generally held every second or third Sunday of the month as a 90-minute catered brunch event with childcare provided. To sign up, simply check the Growth Track box on the communication card or sign up on the app. If you haven't downloaded our app yet, be sure to download it from the app or Google Play Store. The app is a great tool to submit prayer requests, take sermon notes, listen to archive messages, or our weekly devotionals. We also recommend that you use the app to sign up for events or a growth group. Hey, thanks again for watching. If you have any questions about anything you heard today, or just want to learn more about Grove Church, be sure to visit sdgrove.org. Hello and welcome to Grove Church. It is AJ and Colton and we're so glad you joined us for church today. Yeah, we have a few announcements we want to let you know about. If you were able to join us last Sunday or Tuesday, we've been having some amazing prayer meetings here mm -hmm. at the Grove Church. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, we got our social distancing circle set up and we're gathering here with less than 100 people just to worship and cry out together and it's been really, really good. Yeah, so basically this week again and the week after that, we're having prayer meetings every Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday night at 6.30. It's been amazing. So good. Um, and so come, you can actually come tonight if you're watching on Sunday at 6.30 to have a powerful time of prayer, see actual real life people yeah, in so person. Nice. Um, and it's just been so good to fill this room um, with worship again. Yeah. We also want to let you know, starting on June 21st, kind of the three-pronged approach we're having um, to kind of going back to church uh, on Sunday mornings. And here's what we're what we're doing. The first one is if you're just really not ready to see people or, or you just feel more safe at home or however you, you really like having uh, church in your pajamas, oh, yeah. um, you can still watch online. We're still going to be producing all of um, the worship experiences online for you. It'll still be up every Sunday, 8 o'clock. So the first way you can watch and just attend church is by watching online. Yeah, and the second way we're really excited about is what we were calling watch and worship gatherings. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that we're going to have a, a multiple amount of homes, a multiple amount of homes. Yeah, That's multiple. A, a scientific term a there for you. A um, but we're going to have a lot of host homes opened up for you guys to gather with yeah. your friends and family and watch church together. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be supplying worship leaders yeah. at the home so you can have some live worship if you want to. There's even been talk about cinnamon rolls. Mm, so, I mean, I literally don't see any downside to yes. this, but it's going to be amazing. We're going to be launching that June 21st as well. And you can sign up for that uh, um, the week before, which will be June 14th. That entire week, you can sign up on the Grove app and on the Grove website. Basically, mm -hmm. just like you sign up for growth groups, you'll be able to RSVP um, to one of these, you know, uh, worship and, and watch, watch gatherings, gatherings um, and you'll be able to sign up there. So uh, be paying attention. I think a lot of houses are going to fill up real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so be ready on the 14th, but we'll be giving you more information about that. Definitely. And lastly, um, on Thursday nights at six o'clock, we are going to record um, basically the service. And if you want to come and be part of the recording, um, I, I'll be able to hear John actually preach, mm -hmm. laugh, laugh at, at his, his jokes. jokes. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> see all the mistakes. Uh, I don't know about you, but I miss that. I miss the, yeah. Um, but it, yeah. The random coughs. The random you know? coughs, yeah, where he turns it off. It's great. <laughs> so um, come, uh, that'll be starting uh, the uh, probably the week after the 21st. Yes. Um, and so, uh, again, all the information is coming to you, but just to remind you, three things you can do. You can watch online just like we've been doing. You can go to one of those worship gatherings in the different homes. It'll be awesome. you set up on the app. And then also you can watch the recording and actually be a part of recording the service on Thursdays each week. And so we're really excited about that. Mm -hmm. Those are the three ways we're doing church. We love you guys so much, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Hey guys, I'm gonna pray real quick and we're gonna enter into worship, but I just wanna encourage you, man, it's so easy to sing these words and to um, just go through the motions and not think about the extravagant, incredible thing that Jesus did 
for us when he came to earth and died for us. And so um, even just now as we were rehearsing and singing it, I feel like it's just so easy to miss the depth of what Jesus did. Um, so I want to encourage you to focus and to, to pay attention to the words and to think about them and to mean them as you sing along. So God, would you help us to worship you the way you deserve? God, would you help us to really and truly enter into your presence and to be in community with you? Thank you for what you did for each one of us. Let's sing. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your love and kindness saw through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? You came, the God of ages. i
Hey everyone, it's AJ, and it's that time of the service where we receive our tithes and our offerings. And right now, there's going to be three ways that pop up, the three different ways to give, you know, on the app, the website. Um, and I just want to say that when you give, you're not giving to the Grove Church, you're giving to God to honor the Lord. And you're just trusting the Grove Church to, to use this money to expand God's kingdom, not only in San Diego, but here on earth. Um, and and uh, again, one of the things we did last week, it was so cool, is that we raised $8,000 to give to Baja Church Food Ministries. Basically, what we're doing is, is we well, went down to Baja, or we're going down to Baja, and, and we have been working with some pastors and different community people down there um, to basically bless these different people in the community, in the church community, with food. And we did a little bit of math, and we can get about a week's worth of food for $10 down there. So just last week, we got 800 weeks worth of food, or 15 years worth of food, um, for one family. And again, we're not designating that all to one family. Just to put it in perspective, though, it just shows you the heart of generosity and the compassion that we have here at The Grove. And so I want to say thank you for doing that. We are doing another week of giving if you want to give to Baja Church Food Ministries. And so you can designate that, again, on one of the three ways you can see up on the screen right now. Um, you just designate it for Baja Church Ministries. And again, that is a, above and beyond your regular giving. And so I just want to say thank you for being such a church of compassion and love. Um, and let's pray and, and let's receive the tithes and offerings. Lord, help us to use this money to, to know you and make you known. Help us to affect the community in such a positive way and to change the lives, Lord. Thank you for all the obedient hearts that are, that are blessing you, Lord, and, and expanding your kingdom through their giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, it's Pastor John here and I really am so full of faith and hope for you today because I believe this message has got so much potential to really impact your life for good. And uh, we're going to talk about finding rest in a restless world because this world's crazy right now. And, and what I want to do first though is I want you to help me with something. I'd love you to get your phones out. I want you to help us as a staff, a pastoral staff. We want to know how you're doing. Really, how are you doing? Because uh, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anger, and there's a lot of pain. And, and I'd love you to answer these three questions. If you get your phones out and just text um, attend, attend to 97,000, you could really help us out because we want to know how you guys are doing, how we can minister to you. It, it, it helps us. I also think it'll help you as we go through this message that you could identify these things in your life. So here's the first question. The first question is, if you're going through a lot of pain right now, and a lot of people are, what is the most painful thing for you right now? And, and the second thing is, if you're experiencing a lot of anger, what is it that's causing that anger? Where is that? What, what are you most angry about? And the third question is, if you're feeling a lot of fear, what are you most fearful about? And if you would just take a minute, we're going to, maybe 30 seconds, we're going to pause this. And of course, if you're listening on the podcast, you can just think about the answers to those questions. Pain, anger, and fear. Just name those things that are going on for you right now. And we'll get in this message. The title of this message is Finding Rest in a Restless World. I am so excited to talk to you guys about it. Listen, I, I feel the pain. There's pain coming every direction, every group. I mean, watching that video of a man's life ending on video in such an unjust way is painful. And, and, and there's anger. There's anger and there's violence out there. There's anger that's, that's just. There's violence that's, I mean, excuse me, there's anger that's unjust. And, and people want justice. And there's all kinds of stuff going on. And people are struggling. The business owners are angry. If their buildings are rioted, you know, there's, there's, there's people that are suffering. And the police are suffering. Everyone's suffering. And there's fear. There's fear about our cities falling apart, our culture coming apart. I mean, there's even fear about like 
what not to say and what to say. And if you don't say anything, you get yelled at. If you say the wrong thing, you get yelled at. There's just so much. We got a, a person today I just prayed with today that was like, I don't know what to do. And so there's so much unrest. But my goal for you, really, it's not just my goal. It's Jesus' goal for you is that you would learn how to enter into his rest. And I want to start with something so important. Look what it says in Matthew eleven twenty. These are the words of Jesus. He said this. He said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want you to know something. Listen, you're listening to this right now. Jesus wants to give you rest. He can do it. He's the only one that can give us true rest. But first, we have to deal with the brokenness inside of us. I mean, maybe you've come to the end of yourself just by looking at what's going on all around us. There's, there's brokenness all around us. Those who are trying to fix things often make it worse. And our attempts to solve injustice, so often we cause injustice. There's a brokenness in us. And only Jesus can fix that. Maybe you've come to the end of yourself. You've tried so hard to make yourself happy or, or to, to bring freedom to your soul or uh, to find out who you really are. And you've tried all these things. But see, Jesus is the only identity that you don't have to achieve. You just receive it. And I want to challenge you right now. Have you come to the end of yourself? Are you ready to do business with God? Are you ready to get right with God? It starts with inviting Christ into your life. He says, come to me right now. You could pray this prayer with me right now. Just say it. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my brokenness or my sin. Forgive me of the things I've done wrong. Come into my life. I want you. And, and I want to follow you. You're, in a sense, what you're saying is, you're God and I am not. Just say, come into my life and forgive me. <laughs> You know, there's so many voices coming at us on our phones, on our TVs, and our iPads, and the radios. Everywhere you go, there's voices telling us what we're supposed to do and think and be, yelling, screaming at us. And yet, here's Jesus right now, the still, small voice. And you hear him in your heart, and he's saying, come to me. Surrender. Give in to me. Trust me. I love you, he says, and I will give you rest. Can you do that? Can you just say, Jesus, forgive me. Come into my life. I want to follow you. Pray that prayer. And if you did, I want to make sure that you check in with us and, and you text the word growth to 97,000 because we want to send you some resources to help you grow. No strings attached. Just want to help you grow. Well, now listen, if you made that decision, that's the best decision you've ever made. I'm so excited for you. And I remember that when I was growing up and I made that decision and, and I felt just the love of God come in my life. I felt the peace of God, the rest in my soul of God and all the, the brokenness I knew was forgiven. But maybe you've made that decision too, but the world has gotten so crazy lately that it seems like a lot of that rest you used to have and that peace is gone. Well, I want to spend the rest of this time with you. My goal for you today is that three things you would learn to help you walk in peace. You can start them right now. Walk in that rest in a restless world. And so I want to start with you with a quote because it helps us understand how crazy it is right now. I was talking to a pastor, a friend of mine, and he was just saying, man, it is crazy. No wonder we're so exhausted. Do you feel exhausted? Well, if you do, listen to this. Author Michelle Goldberg noted that 2020 started out like 1974, which was an impeachment crisis and quickly became like 1918, a pandemic. And then it turned into like 1929, which what? An economic crash. And now it's like 1968 with massive urban unrest. And we could add 1992 and the image of Los Angeles burning after four police officers were acquitted in the beating of Rodney King. So I want to ask you, do you feel rest or do you feel exhausted? Do you feel physically and emotionally and more importantly, spiritually, do you feel rest? There's an old saying I wrote down years ago that says this, those who don't take a break are broken. I don't want you to be broken. I want you to enter God's rest. And I'm not talking about any kind. I'm not talking about physical sleeping rest. I'm talking about resting your soul. I'm talking about the kind of rest that Jesus had and the peace he had in the midst of a storm. All the disciples were in the boat and they thought we're going to, they're like, we're going to die. Jesus, how could you sleep? That kind of peace that cannot be shaken. 
the kind of peace that God had, or better yet, the kind of rest that he had after he created the world in six days and the seventh day he rested. Just felt good about what he had done. He had done his part and he could just rest. Talking about this peace in our mind and our spirit, free of anxieties, and just, it comes from a place of confidence in Christ, that he's the answer. Do you know this kind of rest in your soul? Well, we're going to take a look at a, a group of people, the Israelites, these Hebrew people who kind of failed to enter this rest. And we're going to use it as a cautionary tale for us what not to do. So I want to look at Exodus 17, verse 1 through 7. This is Moses through the Holy Spirit describing what's going on. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin, nice name, according to the command of the Lord, and camped at Raphimim. And there was no water for the people to drink. That's a crisis. If you're in the desert, no water, crisis. Okay, so legit crisis. We're in a legit crisis right now. Therefore, the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted for the, there for water, and they grumbled against Moses. And they, why now, they said, Think of what they just said. Why now have you brought us up from Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? Now think about what they're saying. Why have you come, brought us out of Egypt to kill us? So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, What shall I do with this people? A little more and they'll stone me. They're going to kill me. They're going to throw rocks at me. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pass before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel and take your hand Take in your hand the staff which you struck the Nile, so miracle that God used through Moses before with that staff, and go, and behold, you will stand bef I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and the water will come out of it, and the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He named the place, and it means, literally it means translated test, and they named the place another word, and it literally means arguing because of the quarrel of the sons of Israel. And because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Can you imagine? They're arguing. They're angry with God. What was their big sin? Why was God upset with them? They were thirsty, of course. They needed water. Their big sin was they had forgotten all the miracles, all the, way, the faithfulness of God in their past. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. They were slaves in Egypt. Being a slave is a horrible thing. And they, the Egyptians were terrible taskmasters, cruel. And God delivered them. Just like you and I, man, sin just beats us down and beats us down. And God delivers us of sin. And we experience this freedom and this joy. And then they get into the wilderness. They get out into the desert and, and they get up to against the Red Sea. And all of a sudden the Egyptians are coming after them to kill them and, or bring them back. They don't know they're scared to death. Crisis. And what did God do? He opened the Red Sea, and they were able to go through safely. And they never had to fear the Egyptians ever again. And then they had no food in the desert. And what did God do? He gave them manna to eat. And then now they're, they're another crisis. And instead of saying, even though we're scared, it's okay, God's going to take care of us. No, they doubt his love. They doubt his kindness towards them. They forget his faithfulness. Now, I want to challenge you with something. Do you find yourself ever doubting God? Do you find yourself doubting his love for you? Do you forget the past miracles? I mean, brothers, listen, if sisters, if you have received Christ, you've had this miracle of a new life in you. You've become alive to God. Before you and I were dead to him, but now because our sins, our brokenness has been forgiven, his spirit has come in and we have a relationship with God and we're going to forever be with him into all eternity. And in this life, he's slowly but surely changing us to be more like Jesus. That is an incredible miracle. Have you forgotten? Well, you know, we doubt God and we struggle. But let's not be like these people. So here's the first critical and important thing you have to do if you're going to find rest in a restless land. You have to remember God's past faithfulness. Remember God's past faithfulness faithfulness. You know, there's a saying, what you focus on, you empower. What you focus on, you empower. They were focused on the circumstances and the difficulties. They were not focused on God's past faithfulness and miracles in their life. You know, I remember one time, maybe you've had this experience too, 
driving a car. My friend let me borrow his convertible kind of a luxury car. It was really cool. And it was fun. I had it for like a week or two and I loved it. It was so much fun. But the interesting thing was before he let me borrow that car, before I'd experienced the fun of that convertible car, I didn't really notice how many of those there were on the road. And as soon as I drove that car, all of a sudden now when I'm driving around, I assume everywhere I go. Why? There was no change in the amount of cars out there. But what changed was all of a sudden now, my focus, I was aware of that type of car because I had experienced it and I focused on it and now I saw it everywhere. And that is the way we enter rest is we remember, remember the past miracles of God. What you focus on, you empower. And I want to tell you, that's what's so powerful about sharing your testimony. Testimony means just like in a courtroom where you give a testimony of what you saw or what something happened. Giving your testimony just is like, hey, let me tell you what God's done in my life. This is what's so powerful. And I hope you'll do this. You can't have my testimony. You got to get your own. You see, I think I look back on my life. I mean, I have an experience where I cried out to God to save me. People say, you know, get saved. But what do they mean? They mean get saved from your brokenness, your sin, and get saved to God. Allow Him to rescue you. Well, I have a story. I experienced His kindness in my life, and I remember it. And there was a time in my life when I felt like there was a sin that I just couldn't get free of, and I felt so crappy about it. I was so frustrated about it. And finally, God just broke that off. It was a struggle. It was work. He had to teach me things. But it was such a wonderful thing to experience the freedom from that thing. And, And I understand what it means to be like stuck. So God gave me empathy for other people, but he also gave me hope for them through this. See, I have a testimony. I remember the past miracles and the faithfulness of God in my life. And I think about when I was a little boy and I could hardly read. And they tried to hold me back in, in, in elementary school. And I cried. They, tried, they were going to hold me back in junior high. And I, I, I don't know how I got through junior high. And yet, here I am standing before you. Graduated San Diego State, the highest GPA they've ever had. Just kidding, no. But be average, okay? i got to be honest. And then even higher, in, and I got a master's in, in seminary. Now, how did that happen? I don't know. It was the faithfulness of God. It intimidates me thinking about it. Like, I can't imagine trying to do that again. But I could because God brought me through. And when I'm faced with struggles and battles, we're in this amazing building. We're so thankful for this building. I don't know how we got it. It was God. We're just faithful. We move forward. And in the crisis, He comes through. And it builds faith for the future. We have a wonderful staff. I'm so thankful for my family. You see, I have testimonies of God's faithfulness. I remember when God called me to plant a church, and it was so overwhelming, but I just knew I'm going to trust in God's faithfulness, and He came through. So listen, it's the same with you as it is with me. Sometimes I think, well, who am I to lead this church? Like Moses, who am I to lead your people? I'm not nearly strong enough a leader these people need, and yet here I am leading a church. See, God's faithfulness gives you confidence and gives you rest, gives you confidence in Him and His character, and you can rest in that. Listen to me. You can have that rest. Remember what He's done in the past. Perhaps some things you need to do are learn how to share your testimony. Learn how to share your story of God's, what He's done in your life. I'd love to hear them. On our app, you can click down Grove Story. I'd love to read about it. I, I read every one of those. I get so excited. It blesses me so much. I hope you'll do that. But I also want you to to practically get your prayer requests. What are the things you're yearning, longing God to do? Write them down. Do you know, you'll see, you write the day you write that down, and then eventually you'll see the answer. And when you need your faith to be built up, you just go to that prayer list and see God's answer to prayer. All right. Let me get you the second thing. The second thing is so so important. King David, through the Holy Spirit, is going to give us a commentary on those people we just read about in, in Exodus 17. It's found in Psalms 95, 6 through 11, it says this, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. I love that. For He is our God, and we we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. He's likening the people to a a, a shepherd with sheep, right? He says, Today, if you will hear His voice and do not harden your hearts. What is He talking about? Like, He says, as in Meribeth and in the day of Massa, those, remember that was arguing and testing the Lord in the wilderness. Those are the names of those two places. In the wilderness, when your fathers tested me, they tried me. Now he's speaking for the Lord, through the Holy Spirit. Though they had seen my work for 40 years, I loathed that generation, God is saying, and said they are people who err in their hearts. 
They will not see me as a good shepherd. They think I'm trying to manipulate, steal, hold back from them when I'm trying to love and help them. So back to that verse. For 40 years, he says, I loathe that generation and said they are a people who err in their heart. They got their facts wrong about me and their heart is wrong towards me. He says, and they do not know my ways. Therefore, I swore in my anger, truly they shall not enter into my rest. And so you see, David, King David is saying, look guys, we're like sheep and God is a good shepherd. He'll lead us to good pastures, but sometimes he has to lead us through a valley or a dry place or a difficult place to get to the new green pastures. Something good is coming, but there's a storm to endure. There's a wilderness to go through. You see, what I'm challenging you to do is to embrace the process, embrace the valley. And I want to tell you there's, a, there's an opportunity in the valley because God wants to take you somewhere. So what the question to ask yourself is when things are going tough is not why is this happening to me? Why are these bad things around me? Why are my circumstances so bad? But to ask this question, what could God do in me, through me, to me with this pain I'm going through? How could he change me, grow me, to be more like him with this difficult situation I'm in? How could I bless the people around me in this difficult situation I'm in? So here's the second key. The first one, remember God's past faithfulness. The second key, this powerful thing to walk in rest is number two. Rejoice in this present valley. Rejoice in the present valley. James said it really crazy. The brother of Jesus in the book of James, James Chapter 1, verse 2, he said, Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. What? He said that because he said, because it leads to your maturity and your growth. We need to be like sheep who trust their good shepherd. And guys, we're going through a valley right now, aren't we? I mean, this COVID-19 thing was tough. The economic crash was tough. The, the, the national pain we have right now with, with just racial disunity. All the stuff we're going through, the, the pain we watched this man's life end on video and all these stuff going around it. Or maybe you're saying, man, my life was unrest before that. Maybe there's a physical thing or there's a betrayal in a relationship in your life or your business is failing before this all happened. And you, you felt like you were in a storm before that. I want to tell you something. When you belong to Jesus and you remember the past and you rejoice in the valley, listen, you know something is true. You can rejoice in the valley. You know why? Because you know that it gets darker before the dawn. Think about the, Isra the Israelites. They were in captivity as slaves, and right before they got freed, it got worse for them. When Moses went to the Pharaoh and he said, look, I'm a, God wants you to free his people, what did Moses say? Oh, they got so much time, let's punish them. Let's make their life, their life tougher. It didn't get easier before it got better. It got harder before they were delivered. Now think about it. They got delivered and they got out into the desert near the Red Sea. It didn't get easier. It got harder. The, the enemy came and there was a crisis and there was fear and they were worried and then they received deliverance. And that's true over and over again. God is moving right now in our midst. He is doing great things. We can't see it. Now imagine a tree. You think a tree, you look at a tree in the wintertime and you say, oh my gosh, there's nothing happening in that tree. And yet, God is doing a work. There's something inside that tree happening to prepare it for the fruit in the next season. And this is what we understand. We rejoice in the present valley because we know there's a work going on around us. I want you to know through us and around us that's going to prepare us for the next thing if we will turn our pain to Him and trust Him. If we will look to Him and we'll remember His past and we rejoice in the present valley. What can God do through you and us through this crisis? I want to tell you, I believe there's a revival coming I believe that more and more Christians are being stirred because a lot of distractions are being stripped away from us. And because of our pain, we're humbling ourselves and we're getting our knees and we're crying out to God and we're going to experience, listen to me, more joy, more love, and more peace. More love, joy, peace. That's what you need, that's what I need, and that's what all the people around us are desperate for. We're going to come back stronger if we give our pain to Him, if we remember His past, faithfulness if we rejoice in the present valleys. I want to get real practical. I want you to think about praying. What does that mean? How do you rejoice in the present valley? Well, you say, God, thank you that even though I can't see the fruit, I know there's going to be some, there's going to be some from the situation. I know that Romans 8, 28 says, you promised me that all things, including this crisis I'm in right now, all things work together for good for those who love God 
and are called according to His purposes. If I love God, and if I call according to His purposes, He's going to figure out a way for this present valley to turn into something good. I want to tell you, I'm so excited for you to understand that and to walk in that. The third step we're going to find in the New Testament, this third step is another commentary on the same group of people back in Exodus. Then we had David talk about them. Now we're going to have the writer of Hebrews talk about them. Hebrews 4, 1 through 3, he says, this, Therefore let us fear if while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of He's saying, look, guys, warning, warning. Let's be a little careful. Pay attention because... We may not get that rest, even though we're followers of Christ, even though we have this rest available to us, and Jesus says, come to me and we can rest. We may not enter it. He says, it keeps going on, for indeed we have had good news preached to us, just as they also. But the word they heard, listen carefully, did not profit them, because it was not united in faith. Excuse me, read that again. Because it was not, it did not profit them, because it was not united by faith. In those who heard. For we have believed, for we who have believed enter that rest. How do you enter that rest? By believing, by faith. Since if you, you can hear all the truth, you can hear about God's past promises, you can hear about the valley and how He wants to do great things, and how, if you will endure, He'll mature you through it. But if you do not believe, you cannot receive it, you cannot walk into it. Just as he has said, I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. That rest has been available to humans ever since the beginning. He's warning us, the writer of Hebrews, they heard the word, but it didn't profit them at all. So I want to challenge you. First thing you got to do, if you want to have rest in a restless world, you got to remember the past miracles of God in your life, the faithfulness. The second thing you got to do is you got to Rejoice in the present valley. And the third thing, last thing, so important, you have to receive it through faith. You receive it through faith in tomorrow. I mean, you can enjoy the peace and, and the joy today that you're going to walk in tomorrow. You can receive it by faith. Does that make sense? I can trust in the character of God, even though I'm going through a hard season right now, I know His goodness and His kindness towards me and His love for me. And so I can feel safe and confident in the storm. My job is to, is to work hard at what He's called me to do and do my part and then rest and trust Him for His part. Do what God's called you to do and then rest and trust Him to do His part. I hope you'll do that. I have a friend of mine who's challenged me recently, two years ago, I was rereading my journal, which I do regularly, Jan it was February 2nd, 2018. I needed to rest. And he said to me, he said, John, your whole focus is about the battle and you get so emotionally charged and you get so worn out and stressed and then the next battle comes and you're overwhelmed and you're just worn down and God wants to bring regular peace and joy into your life in the midst of the battle. To remember the battles the Lord, as Scripture says, and, and to fight from a place of peace and strength. And I've struggled with this and I've prayed about this and I've asked God to help me. I want you to know I'm learning this with you as well. But I want you to... Enter, I know this is true. We enter that rest through, pay, through faith. We enter that rest through faith. Now listen, I'm going to close this off now, and I want to challenge you with something. I want to challenge you and invite you to come and pray with us. We're coming together every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 6.30 to pray at the church. We're believing, we're believing and rem we're remembering the past miracles of God. This gives us confidence to believe in the middle of this dark time, that this valley, that we're going to see a great fruit and we're going to receive that peace and that rest and that confidence through it. I hope you'll come and pray with us and worship with us. I, I pray you'll, you'll make this part of your own routine in your life. Get your, your, share your story with people. Write out a prayer uh, journal and, and keep track of prayer requests. Hey, right before I get off, I want to encourage you one more thing. There's people who want to pray for you. We love you. We care about you. They want to encourage you and pray with you. All you got to do is text that number on the screen. And Grant and Jillian will call you. Or someone on the prayer team will. And they will help you through whatever you're going through. Don't suffer alone. Take that step. God bless you guys. We love you. We're so excited about what God's going to do in this valley. We're going to walk and we're going to see great things.